Hello, my friends. Well, we have another episode in our chapter book today, and that's Remember Wish Tree by Catherine Applegate. We're on chapter 21. Bongo, I said early that morning as the last stars faded like weary fireflies. There's something I need you to do. Does it involve potato chips? Bongo mumbled. No. And I'd rather sleep. It's about Samar. You promised you'd let me sleep in. I didn't promise. You implied. You want to grant Samar's wish. This roused Bongo. She fluttered down to her favorite branch, the one she'd nicknamed Home Plate. Bongo likes to watch the kids play softball at the elementary school. Uh, Red, you don't make wishes happen. You're the place where wishes go. You're like a, like a leafy garbage can in a good way. For 216 rings, I've sat on my roots and listened to people hope for things. And a lot of times those wishes never happened, I'm guessing. Bongo tucked a feather into place. Sometimes that's for the best. Remember that kindergartner who wanted a bulldozer? I'm passive. I just sit here watching the world. You're a tree, Red. That's kind of the job description. This is a good wish, and it's a wish I can help make happen. I paused. Well, we can make it happen. Yeah, I had a feeling this is where this was going. Bongo glided to the ground. Look, I heard Samar's wish. How exactly are you going to find her a friend? You'll see, I said hoping I sounded more confident than I felt. Red, Bongo paced back and forth. With each step, her head bobbed forward. We've got more serious issues, pal. Francesca's talking about turning you into toothpicks, and your residents are frantic about where they're going to move if that happens. She came close and nudged me fondly. Of course, they're worried about you, too. I know that. Fresh baked bread poked her head out from under the porch. It was barely dawn. Only the white stripe running the length of her face was clearly visible. I've offered to take in one of, one of the tree families temporarily, she announced. Preferably the opossums. They're better behaved than the ewes. That's very generous of you, Fresh, I said. But I was interrupted by Big U the mother of the three raccoon babies. She was in my large hollow, grumbling under her breath. I beg your pardon, she exclaimed. You, you, and you have excellent manners. They're too inquisitive, said Fresh Baked Bread, always poking their noses where they shouldn't be, grabbing things with those little paws of theirs. Well, at least they don't stink, Big U cried. And your children have paws, last time I checked. Harry Spiders, the mother opossum, peeked out cautiously from her own hollow. Opossums name, things, name themselves after things they fear. Stink is in the nose of the beholder, said Harry Spiders. And while I personally think your children have a delightful odor, fresh, I've already got dibs on the woodpile two doors down should anything happen to dear Red. She patted me. No offense, love. Just thinking ahead, you know. No offense taken, I assured her. I saw that pile first, Big U cried. Share the skunk den, Harry Spider said. I wouldn't be caught dead in that place, Big U exclaimed. Not now. Now that I know that my inquisitive children aren't wanted. Well, they're a bit boisterous said Harry Spiders. At least my children have spunk, said Big U. Your kids faint when they see their own shadows. Playing possum is a useful adaptation, said Harry Spiders, her pink nose twitching. The world is a dangerous place, and in any case, we can't control it. It just happens. 
If I may interrupt, came a cool voice from my highest branches. It was Agnes. There's a nice looking linden tree two blocks away, just vacated by a gray squirrel family. We're looking at it as a possibility. But there's a tomcat that runs loose there. Collar, no bell. So that's an issue. Also a big slobbery dog. In fairness, all dogs are slobbery, Bongo observed. I really think you should all calm down, I interrupted. Let's not buy trouble. One day at a time, my friends, who knows what tomorrow may bring. The mothers glared at me. I heard a great deal of sighing. Too much, wise old tree, I asked. Too much, wise old tree, Bongo confirmed, as everyone retreated into their homes in a huff. They're all a bit tense, Bongo said, worried about your, your situation. I can see that. I'm worried too, Bongo said in an almost whisper. I know, I said gently, but every cloud has a silver red, Bongo interrupted. Sorry. There must be something I can do, Bongo said. Well, you're a good friend, Bongo, but sometimes all you can do is stand tall and reach deep. Red. Sorry, I said again. What will I do without you, Red, Bongo said softly. You'll be fine, my friend, I promise. We both fell quiet. At last, Bongo shook herself, feathers fluffing. In any case, maybe not the best time to be granting wishes in any point, is my point. Seems to me this is exactly the right time, I replied. Bongo groaned, her little old man groaned. She knew I wasn't backing down. And with that, we began to plan. Chapter 22. We executed plan number one, an hour and a half later, when Stephen headed off for school. He'd gotten only as far as the sidewalk when Bongo strove, dove straight down toward his backpack, poking at the zipper with her beak. She cawed frantically. When crows want to be loud, they can be extremely loud. What? Stephen cried. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you, bird? He dropped his backpack to the ground. Bongo landed on the backpack, looking up at him hopefully. Chip, please, she said. Stephen rolled his eyes. Seriously? Hello, Bongo said. Chip, please. Stephen put his hands on his hips. Okay, fine. I've seen you in action, working the bus line. Bongo hopped to the ground as Stephen unzipped his backpack. You rock, she said politely. Stephen pulled out his lunch bag and opened it. Let's see. I've got tuna fish sandwich, carrot sticks, but before he could say anything more, Bongo plunged into the backpack, grabbed a sheet of paper, and flew skyward. Hey, that's my English homework, Stephen cried. Come back here, you thief. Bongo flew high into my branches and landed with a victorious caw. Stephen stalked around the bottom of my trunk where the yellow police tape encircled me. Please, Crow, he pleaded. I'll give you my whole sandwich, please. Bongo perched on the paper, freeing her beak. No way, she replied. A few more minutes of grumbling and Stephen gave up. Great, he muttered as he grabbed his backpack. Mrs. Kellerman is never going to believe me when I tell her a crow ate my homework. Chapter 23 when Samar exited her house, it was time for the rest of our plan. She paused as she always did to say hello, and Bongo, as she always did, said hello back. But this time, Bongo surprised Samar by landing on her shoulder and presenting her with a mangled piece of paper. Samar took it from Bongo. This has Stephen's name on it. 
Why on earth do you have it? No way, Bongo said by way of an answer. Well, I'll be sure he gets this, Samar said. Bongo gave a little caw and headed back to me. Perfect. Simple plan, beautifully executed. Samar would give the homework to Stephen. They'd strike up a conversation about the crazy crow in the big oak tree. They'd laugh, they'd share, they'd realize they have a lot in common. Voila! Friendship! It was a great plan. Except for the part that came just seconds later. The part where Samar noticed a friend of Stephen's walking by. She dashed over and asked him to give Stephen the piece of paper. And that was that. Meddling isn't as easy as I thought it would be, I confessed to Bongo. Hey, I did my part. You were wonderful, I said. Well, we'll just have to try again. We don't have a lot of time. Red, Bongo said with a sigh. Please don't remind me. And that's where we're leaving it for tonight. Well, they've executed plan number one. Do you think there's a plan number two? I do. But right now, let's pray. Gracious God, sometimes it's hard to make friends. But sometimes you give us more plans than we can ever, ever execute. So if plan one doesn't work, there's plan two or three, or four. Help us to be friends with all the people that we meet. Amen. Now, it's really time for bed, so we'll have more of the story the next time we meet. So, hope you've brushed your teeth, hop into bed, and have a good night.